Good evening from the nation's capital. I'm David Aiken. and thank you so much for watching. We start tonight in Battleground, Ontario, of course, where we are checking in first with our Sun News team on the campaign trail. Paige McPherson is with Kathleen Wynne and the Liberals. Joshua Skernick is with Tim Hudak and the Progressive Conservatives. And our Lisa Mrazek is tracking Andrea Horvath and the NDP. Investing in technology to better prepare for our future seemed to be Liberal leader Kathleen Wynne's theme of the day today in Northern Ontario. Right here in Sault Ste. Marie this morning at a Catholic school, she toured with local candidate David Orzietti talking about her three-year, $150 million investment to put technology into schools. Then she's visiting a local technology company in Sudbury, but then it's back to Toronto for the night. Tim Hudak used a beautiful Tuesday in order to hit home on the issue of the College of Trades. Visiting a hair salon in Pickering, he talked to hairstylists who say all of the red tape, testing and just bureaucracy is making them rethink the career that they love. He also talked to one woman who says that she could lose her job. She says she's excellent at her work. It's a written test that's getting in the way. He ends his day here in the GTA before heading to Niagara for Wednesday. NDP leader Andrea Horvath kicked off the morning at Queen's Park where she said this election campaign really is all about cleaning up the corruption of the former Liberal government and stopping the waste of taxpayer dollars. She then travelled here to St. Catharines, an area that she says has been plagued by job losses. She toured this construction site with candidate Jenny Stevens. This is a major restoration and redevelopment project of historic local buildings. Horvath's next stop, Niagara Falls, where she visited Wayne Gates' campaign office. He picked up that seat for the NDP in a February by election. Horvath rounded out the day in Fort Erie where she stopped by the racetrack for its opening day. All right, our chief Ontario election correspondent Bryn Weiss is fresh off the plane from Thunder Bay back in our Toronto studio. And Bryn, one of the new focuses of the campaign this week, you've seen it, I've seen it, is how the Liberals will meet their deficit targets. They plan on reducing the deficit. This was in their budget. It was in their platform that was out on Sunday. They plan on reducing that deficit four and a half billion dollars a year in each of the next two years. Without some serious public sector cuts, how's, how's the back and forth on that issue playing out on the campaigns? Yeah, you know, David, this has really been one of the cornerstones of this election campaign is Tim Hudak's pledge to uh, deal with 100,000 public sector jobs over four years, either through attrition or some other means. The Liberals have made this really a staple of their campaign, and now Kathleen Wynne is facing some criticism from the Conservatives uh, that she may have a hidden agenda to dump some public sector jobs as well. This is all the fallout from a non-answer that she gave yesterday after the Northern Leaders debate when she was asked how she's going to balance the books, how she's going to slay the deficit and not eliminate any of those 300,000 public sector positions that have been added to the government since 2003. Earlier today, the Progressive Conservatives, David, came out with a new campaign attack slogan. It's a bit Can of a tongue I, uh, twister here. There's no Ian Lee. Come clean Kathleen. It's a bit of a tongue twisting slogan. It's also a new ad campaign oh, they have see. accusing her of having a hidden agenda. Let's watch it. Kathleen Wynne claims she'll balance the budget, but why won't she tell us how she'll do it? After being pressured by reporters on whether her plan included laying off public sector workers, she said, there is no yes or no answer. Excuse me? There's no yes or no answer? OPSU union boss Smokey Thomas says there are 60,000 government workers too many. Does Kathleen agree? Is her number higher or lower? The truth isn't complicated, Kathleen. The people of Ontario deserve a yes or no answer. It's time to come clean. Well, David, yesterday Kathleen Wynne said there was no easy yes or no answer. Today, she did say there is an easy answer. And that answer from Kathleen Wynne is no. We asked Kathleen Wynne earlier today uh, in Sault Ste. Marie, David, whether she would ever consider eliminating a public sector position. And here's what she had to say. There is only one party that's put, putting forward a platform to cut public sector workers. That's the Conservatives. Will we continue to, uh, to be prudent? Will we continue to look for uh, ways to, uh, to find savings? Absolutely. But will we implement a program of layoffs? Absolutely not. The public sector will be at least as big at the end of our term if we're re-elected as it is now. 
Well, there you go, David, at least as big as it is now. And that's where the concern is, because it's not just the progressive conservatives who are maybe raising a red flag here. Other people are wondering, as you did in the intro, how can you slay the deficit, sometimes $4.5 billion a year, and not eliminate a single job? Let's just review the deficits that the Liberals are planning to run between now and four years from now. This year, we're looking at $12.5 billion deficit. Next year, $8.9 billion deficit. The year after that, 2016-2017, 5.3 billion dollars finally getting back to balance in 2017 2018 so that's the liberal plan and people are questioning how you can achieve those goals without eliminating any position at all in the public sector even Don Drummond David in his very important report that came out two years ago talked about the need for severe austerity measures and the need to make difficult painful cuts in order to meet any kind of fiscal goals uh, that you would set in the future he warned of course of tens of billions of dollars in deficit if cuts aren't made so people are wondering, how is Kathleen Wynne going to do it while still preserving all of those jobs in the public sector? And just as an interesting note here, David, early in the campaign, even Andrea Horvath suggested there might be fat to be trimmed in the public sector. So we're back now to who's left of who, who's cutting public sector jobs. It's still a big question on the campaign trail. David? Bryn Weiss in Toronto for us tonight. Bryn will be back a little later on in the program. Thank you so much.